Hello students and good day. I welcome you to the module 5 of your DSP 2201 use of English which is on spoken English and uh, it's going to be taught to you by Leila Kadir Mekaba. On this part of the Moodle, we are going to look at vowels, consonants, syllables, minimal pairs, consonant clusters, consonant uh, contrasts, stress, and in It is very important for students who are learning English as a second language and for students who are learning courses that are not related to English to also have a brief knowledge on the particular aspect of this Moodle like students who are studying, uh, who are from uh, various backgrounds in the School of Continuing Education, those of you that are studying Arabic, Islamic Studies, Political Science, Sociology, Geography, and the rest. This particular aspect of the module will help you in your spoken English and in your written English. As you all know, English is not a consistent language. What you say is not what you write, unlike Hausa, Igbo, or Yoruba. English, what you say, is different from what you write. For example, when I say psychology, psychology is spelled P-S-Y-C-H-O-L-O-G-Y, which is contrary to the way I pronounce it. So it's very important for st students to know the difference between the related sound so that you don't use this particular sound to mean this particular sound. And also, this particular aspect of the Moodle will help you in pronouncing your words correctly and selecting your sounds correctly. For example, when a student comes and wants to say come, and instead of saying C-O-M-E, ends up saying C-E-L-M, which is come. So this particular module will help you to select your sounds correctly and then to produce the sounds correctly. So in any language, whether English, Yoruba, Hausa, Chinese and the rest, we all use sound to produce or to make sense or to produce words, to communicate. So these sounds are two in all languages. We have the vowel sounds, we have the consonant sounds. We are going to look at the vowel sounds now. But before we do that, I would like you to understand that in any sound you want to mention, you are supposed to mention that sound in between these two slashes. You put the sound between the slashes. Whoever is reading knows that what you are referring to is not a letter, it's a sound. Without those slashes, whoever is reading or whoever sees it will assume that you are referring to a letter. So make sure you take note of this particular difference. So what's a vowel sound? A vowel sound is a sound that is produced with free movement of air from the lung. All speech production is done with the help of speech air, what we call speech air. And this air comes from the lungs to our mouth and then we produce that particular sound. I would like you to put your hands on your mouth and then you talk at the same time. As you are talking, you'll be feeling the air at, on your on the uh, on the on your hands or you blow the air so that is the air that helps you in producing that particular sound or is in communication so all vowel sounds are voiced you put how do you know a sound is a voice sound you put your hand on your neck and then you produce that particular sound so all vowel sounds are voiced and they are free so in the produce, production of those vowel sounds, air is not interrupted. The air comes freely from your lungs, your gullet, your mouth without any obstruction. And all vowel sounds are oral. That means they are produced directly from the mouth. I will explain further on this when we come to explain consonant sounds. We have three types of vowel sounds. We have the short vowel sounds, we have the long vowel sounds, and we have what we call the diphthongs. In standard British English, we have all in all 20 vowel sounds, which include the short, the long, and the diphthongs. 
So for you to learn more on this short vowel sound, the long vowel sound, the diphthongs, how they are pronounced, example of what they appear in, please click on this line and you will learn more on that. We have the short vowel sounds are often referred to the sounds that correspond to the letters. We have the ah. As you are producing this sound, please, I would like you to put your hands by your neck. You will understand why I said all vowel sounds are voiced sound. Ah, e, e, o, and u. With your hand by your neck, you will feel the vibration of your vocal cord, which says that all vowel sounds are voiced sound. Sometimes this vowel sound, ye, sound is included that means they are now sick initially what we traditionally we have five but sometimes some scholars add this, this y sound as the sixth the long vowel sounds are those sounds that have two dots in front of the sound and they are longer than the short sound these are the e sound we have the o we have the o sound as in word, and we have the U sound as in four, and we have the A ah sound as in as. Okay, here is a chart showing all the 20 vowel sounds, the long, the short, and the diphthongs, plus examples in words. Diphthongs are sometimes referred to as glides, because in producing this sound, the tongue glides from one sound to the other, and often the first unit of is longer than the second unit. That is, this particular sound is longer than this one. That's what I mean by saying the first unit is longer than the second unit. The diphthongs are eight in number, standard British English. So this brought us to consonant sound. The consonant sounds are those sounds that are opposite to the vowel sounds. Earlier on, I explained that vowel sounds are sounds that are voiced, oral, and unobstructed. That means the sounds are free. The air that comes out from the lungs to produce vowel sounds is free. There is no obstruction. You can imitate what you see in the video, and you will understand more what, of what I said. When you put your hand by your neck, and you say ah, or you say ah, e, o, you see that the sounds are produced without any obstruction. There is no organ of articulation that is interrupting that particular sound production. But in consonant sounds, that is not the case. When you produce consonant sounds, some of the sounds are either voiced or voiceless, and some of the sounds are either obstructed or unobstructed and some of the sounds are either oral or nasal so any of these three can give us a consonant sound we have 24 consonant sounds in the standard british english you can follow the link here for the correct pronunciation of the consonant sounds together with more examples. here we have the list of the 24 consonant sounds starting with the sounds as in pen and hat and the sound as in bat or cab and the sound as in pen pen walk and so on as in bug bird bad and so on we have the sound as in picking on kitchen we have the sound as in judge budget change etc we have the sound as in can height quite technical we have the f sound f as in fish laugh rough notice that the f sound has different spellings from the examples i give the first one is spelled fish f i s h the second one is l a u g h laugh and the third one is graph 
G-R-A-P-H. So the pH and the GH, the end of love and the pH and the end of love, plus the F at the beginning of fish are all pronounced as F. That's why English is difficult to learn and it's inconsistent. What you hear is not We have V as in convict or forgive. And we have the th sound. This sound is produced by opening your upper, the lower and upper teeth slightly, and then you bring out your tongue in between them, and then you produce the sound. As in thirst, think, Catholic, and uh, it is a voiceless sound. It is spelled mostly using th. The th sound is similar to the th sound, but this one is a voiced sound that appears in words like cat, brother, mother, clothes, and the rest. We have s as in sip, hexagon, across, and the rest. We have the z as in zipper, zip, cousin, watches, and the rest. And we have the sh sound as in ship, ocean, nation, treasure. We have the j sound as in genre, casual, leisure, vision, and village. We have m as in common, home, and the rest. We have n sound as in nice, dinner, fun, and so on. And we have the n sound. This one is a nasal sound. That differentiates consonant sounds from vowel sounds. Some sounds can be nasal, some sounds can be oral. While in vowel sounds, all the sounds are oral, they are not nasal. We have h sound as in hook, hat, and so on. We have l as in like, help, and so on. We have r as in right, wrong, and so on. We have the w sound as in one, quiet, or wait. So these are the 24 consonant sounds in English. Here is an exercise for you to practice. You write down as many words as you can beginning with the y sound. You can also choose another sound and then you write inside this uh, table. You write a place, an animal that begins with the sound, or food that begins with the sound, a color that begins with the sound, or a person that has particular that whose name begins with the particular sound. Another exam uh, exercise is a tongue twister for you to practice, which has different sounds and it's very important for you to twister. It helps you master the differences between the sounds. We have the r and the l, l red lorry, yellow lorry. He sells seashells by the seashore. So you have two sounds there master and that's how it goes on a syllable is a unit of sound which contains a vowel and one or more consonant one or more syllables joined together form a word and words are divided in accordance to the number of syllables they have why do we need to learn syllable Familiarity with syllable pattern helps students to read longer words accurately and fluently because you'll be able to break this word into different syllable patterns and then you bring it together and you'll be able to fluently pronounce the word. When students are able to say one word at a time, spelling becomes much easier. So it's important for those who are learning spelling. It will be easier for them to spell a word accurately. All words have syllables. A word may have one, two, three, four, or even more syllables. So we have examples of words that have one syllable, two syllables, three, and four, as obviously in the next slide. Here are two syllable words index and bill. The niece, napkin, publish. Nick, album, and, and so on.
Here we have examples of words that have three syllables. Fun, as, as, le, establish, in, ha, fit, atlantic, magne, consistent, misconduct, and build on. Here are four syllable words for example. I would like you to practice this the way I did for the two three syllable words. So please practice this and see how many syllables will you get. But there are four. So why how do you teach uh, how to count the syllables? For example, if you are a teacher or if you want to practice and know how many syllables are in a word. So you do that by putting your hand under your chin as you say the word. You count the number of times your jaw drops. Establishment. That's how you put it. Or by clapping your hands and saying each syllable. Publish. Publish. Bookshelf. Minimal press. Are words or phrases that differ in only one phonological element and have distinct meanings. So they are two words with different meaning, but similar how a similar is spelling despite the difference in one phonological element. A phonological element can be at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of the word. So here are examples: fun and fun. Here we have two similar words but different meanings yet have only one uh, one phonological element the first step which is the f and the v sound sit and sit desk and disc wait and wait bad and bug so and so not and no bad and bad more practice here uh, pronunciation of these particular sounds. But what differentiates p and b is that, as you recall earlier, I told you to put your hands by your neck where your vocal cord is, and then you produce the two sounds. So when you notice that p is voiceless and b is voiced because your vocal cord vibrates as you produce b sound. But when you say p, it's only the lip that moves, so it's voiceless sound. Okay, here are more examples of consonant contrasts. You can also follow this link for more worksheets to practice on these uh, consonant contrasts. The next is what we call consonant clusters. Consonant clusters is a group of consonants which have no intervening vowels. That's you see consonants that either are two, three, four coming together without any vowel sound in between. In other words, when two consonants appear next to each other, we call them consonant clusters. It can be two, three, or four sounds. We have examples as in black. L, L, there is a cluster, consonant cluster. And also in the word help, help, we have consonant cluster there. We also have consonant cluster in desk. Sk, sk. There are two consonants there. In tasks, we have three consonant clusters there. Sk, sk. And in sixty, we also have three consonant clusters at the end of the word. We have texts. We have four consonant clusters here, just as we have it in glimpsed. glimpsed. So you, uh, you can check for more consonant clusters and then practice on your own. Consonant clusters are important because they are in many English words, so you can't avoid coming across them. Mispronouncing a consonant cluster may lead to pronouncing another word. For example, 
If you leave out the L in black, you may end up. Hello. You may end up with that. Also, removing the L in click may end up giving you a kick sound, uh, a kick word. So, this is basically some of the examples. They are essential for pronouncing grammar markers such as are the past tense and plurals. Okay, so now we will look at stress. Stress means placing pressure or, on a particular sound for emphasis. In English, it is the syllables that are stressed. As was mentioned earlier, that words are built up, uh, made up of stress uh, syllables. So some words have one syllable, some two, some three, four, and above. So to show which part of a word is stress, it is done by inserting a slash above that particular syllable that is that has that particular emphasis. So words are stressed in accordance to the number of syllables you may have. This is a mistake. So we have, this is a mistake. It's not syllables. It's, it's syllables. Dictionaries show which syllables are stressed in a word. So to know which part of a word that is being stressed, you can check your dictionary. Depending on whether the word is a verb or a noun, it, uh, it, the dictionary can clarify that for you. You can check and you will find out where that particular stress lies. So stress is of two kinds. We have the primary and we have the secondary stress. Primary stress comes at the beginning of the word while secondary stress comes towards the end of the word. So, stress is indicated by a stroke before the syllable. So, that stroke is applied before the syllable at the top side of the syllable. So, note that a change in stress can result to change in meaning. You can have words like convict and convict kind of words if you stress in the first syllable it may mean a different thing when you stress in the second syllable it also means a different thing so for you to understand more on this there is a link for you you can click on the link and you will see the words that how they are stressed in the first or second or third syllable and how the meanings changes because the stress changes uh, in place Most words are stressed on a particular syllable, as we mentioned earlier. But there are certain word classes that do not have stress at all. These word classes are articles, prepositions, and pronouns. Anyway, you see these classes of uh, uh, words, they are never stressed. So now we look at intonation. What is intonation? Intonation is brought about by the level of pitch in utterance. When a person speaks, the pitch of his or her voice changes. Sometimes it is high and sometimes it is low. This is natural to avoid monotony. It is impo impossible to speak with the same tone all the time. Pitch and tone vary across variations in emphasis, implication, attitude of the speaker and so on. All languages use pitch and tone differently. In Nigerian languages, variations in tone results to changes in, in, in the individual words. In English, it affects an entire stretch of words or an utterance. Intonation is indicated by a pattern of rises and falls in the pitch. In English, this is what differentiates a mere statement and a question. For example, if I say you are coming <coughs> and end with a fall in pitch on the last word, you are coming. This is a statement. But if I say it with a rise in pitch on the same last word, that is a question. See, you are coming. That means I, it's, I'm, I'm asking you, are you coming or not? But you are coming. Just a mere statement. So depending on how you rise or fall of your pitch, depending on the kind of statement or question you are making.
So what are the types of drills we have? Inclination pattern has two major drills with variations between them. They are the rising tune and the falling tune. The tune can be indicated by gliding arrows, either pointing upwards for the rising tune or downwards for the falling tune. The falling tune. The falling tune is usually used in the following ways. You can use it in statements, for example, I left this morning. Let's go out for a walk. Or in commands, example, run there, get him arrested. Or in WH questions, what is your name, where are you going, and so on. The rising tune is usually used in the following ways. The first one is in general questions that use uh, that usually require a yes or no answer. Example, have you waited long? Your answer will be yes or no. Is he crazy? Yes or no. It's also used in making requests, such as, could you pass me the sugar, please? Can I eat here? Or, show protest. I didn't say that. And the rest. So you should note that the syllable on which the tune begins to rise or fall is one that bears the greatest prominence. Hey students, thank you for listening. I hope to meet you in our interactive session online. So in case you have any question or any uh, explanation that you need, please let's meet during the online interaction session. Thank you. Bye-bye.